In this video, we're going to look at precipitation reactions. Uh, precipitation reactions are the first type of metathesis reactions, and these ones involve the formation of an insoluble solid. And uh, that is how ions are removed from the solution. So the, the most important thing is going to be the solubility rules for these. And these basically tell you whether an ionic compound is soluble or not soluble. So you need to know the solubility rules in order to evaluate that. Okay, this slide shows the solubility rules. And the solubility rules are going to allow you to determine if a compound is either soluble or insoluble. So these are really important for precipitation reactions. So the way this works is basically you have a rule and then you have exceptions. So some rules tell you that something is soluble, other rules tell you that something is generally insoluble, and then the exceptions will be exceptions to that general rule. So for example, lithium, sodium, potassium, and ammonium, they're all soluble, no exceptions. So if you have one of these cations, it's going to be soluble. Same thing goes for acetates and nitrates. They're all soluble, no exceptions. So chloride, bromide, and iodide, these are generally soluble except these guys over here, which you have to memorize, these are insoluble. And the same goes for sulfate. So these guys over here, everything else is soluble except for that set. And then these ones down here, the carbonate, phosphate, sulfate, and hydroxide, these ones are all insoluble. And then these over here are the exceptions. So really what you have to do is you just have to memorize these. Um, you, have to, you have to go through, memorize the table, and once you have the table memorized, the, you can predict a precipitation reaction very easily because you'll know what's going to be soluble versus insoluble. So let's jump back now and look at a, some precipitation reactions. Let's take a look at an example, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set up the example, and then we're going to look at some steps that will help you start to process these metathesis reactions. Okay, so let's say that you're given two ionic compounds, NaCl aqueous and silver nitrate aqueous. So in essence, what's happening here is you basically have two beakers. You have a beaker with this, you have a beaker with this, and then you add the silver nitrate into the beaker with sodium chloride. So you have a solution of silver nitrate, you have a solution of sodium chloride, you mix them up together, and then you ask, well, what are my products gonna be? So here's what, here's what the steps you're gonna take are. So step one, you're gonna switch to partners on the product side. So let's do that. So we're going to take the Na and we're going to switch it with the NO3. And when you do this, you have to write a proper ionic compound. So remember, Na plus and NO3 is minus. So you have to do your crisscross method. So uh, in this case, it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. So you can write Na NO3. That's really important because if you have um, if you have compounds here that are that have different charges, you have to account for that and then balance. Okay, so NaNO3, and then we have uh, silver, and we put it together with chloride. So again, we have silver plus and Cl minus. So we have uh, silver and a silver plus and a chloride minus. We do our crisscross. So that's just going to give us silver chloride, a one to one ratio. As a caveat to this, you want to make sure you write proper ionic compounds. and that you balance. And we're gonna look at a case where you have to balance in, in just a second. So we're just gonna get through this simple one, then we'll do a little bit more complicated one. Okay, so then step two, uh, check your solubility rules for any insoluble compounds in the products. And then so if you get a yes or if you get a no, so if you get a yes, then you write the you write the phase label as a solid, right? Because that compound, if it's insoluble, um, it'll be a solid, and therefore you'll have a precipitate. If no, then you write aqueous.
And um, then what, what we know from that is that no precipitation reaction takes place. If the no, if the, if this becomes the case, so if you get a no, then you're going to want to go on and check for acid base or gas forming in the subsequent step. So um, it, just because you don't get a solid does not mean that you're you're done. It just means that you have to go on and check the next thing. So when we go through acid base, you'll have already checked your products to see if you had any solids, and then you can check for an acid base reaction. But in this case, if you get a no, that just means that no precipitation reaction is taking place. So let's check our solubility rules here. So NaNO3, we know that all nitrates are soluble, so this one is going to be an aqueous, plus all, N all sodium are, are soluble. So that one's soluble. Now, we generally speaking, all chlorides are soluble except for silver chloride, among others. So this one's going to get a solid. And then the last step is if you have a reaction, you can write the uh, complete and the net as needed. So if, for example, the problem asked us to write the net ionic equation for this, and we have our products, we have NaNO3 aqueous, and we have AgCl solid. So we can write the complete in the net. So to write the complete, we would break up anything that's aqueous. So we have Ag plus aqueous plus NO3 minus aqueous plus Na plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous gives Na plus aqueous plus NO3 minus aqueous plus AgCl solid. So we cross out, we cross out our spectators. The NO3, the NO3 goes away, the Na goes away. So we're left with our net ionic of Ag plus aqueous plus Cl minus aqueous goes to AgCl solid, and that's our net ionic. Let's take a look at some practice problems that involve metathesis uh, precipitation reactions. So on this slide, we have uh, practice question one. We have two examples here. Uh, we'll, we'll probably just do one. Oh, we might do both. Um, and then we have the solubility rules just as a reference. Okay, so we'll bring those up so that we can see them. All right, so let's do the first one. So our, our, step, our first step is going to be to switch to partners. So we're going to switch to partners. Our first one is going to be nickel 2 plus and S2 minus. Now the way that I know that is over here the nickel has two nitrates, so I know that this is nickel uh, plus 2. And the S has two hydrogen, so I know that this is nickel, uh, this is sulfur minus two. So when I put those together, I can have nickel sulfate. Sulfide, I'm sorry. Nickel sulfide. And then we switch the ion pairs for the other. So we have uh, H and NO3. So H has a plus and NO3 has a minus, so this gets HNO3. And now we have to balance. If we look over here on the left, we have two NO3s and two H. Two, so we have to balance this, so we're going to get uh, two HNO3. You got to make sure you balance, that's really important. So now we consult our solubility rules to decide if these are going to be soluble or not. So nickel sulfide is uh, not soluble, that sul most sulfides are insoluble, so this gets a solid. And then um, we get uh, two HNO3, nitrates are aqueous, nitrates are soluble, so we give it an aqueous. And uh, in this case, it doesn't ask for the net ionic equation, but we can we can write a net ionic equation. And as you get better at this, you can start to write the net ionic equation just knowing what ions are built into the solid, right? So what we know is happening is, is that the nickel and the sulfide are coming together. The nickel 2 plus and the, sulf the sulfide 2 minus is coming together. So we get Ni2 plus aqueous plus S2 minus aqueous gives NiS solid. And I was able to do that just knowing that the, the, those are the ions that are built up into the solid. Everything else is going to be a spectator. Okay, so let's look at the next one. So we have uh, K plus and Cl minus, and we have copper 2 plus. I know that because there's two nitrates associated with it, and we have NO3 minus. So let's switch pairs. So we're going to get copper 2 plus and Cl minus. So we have to, to balance this out. We're going to need, we're going to, need to write this as Cu2 Cl. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to write. We're gonna have to write this as CuCl2 because the copper is is two plus and the Cl is minus. And then we're gonna write um, that we have 
uh, potassium nitrate, KNO3. Uh, because the potassium is plus one, the nitrate is minus one. Uh, if we balance this, we're going to need a two here. And over here, we're going to need a two for the KCL, just to make sure that we have uh, balance for everything. All right, now let's look at our solubility rules. So copper chloride, most chlorides are soluble. Is this copper chloride an exception? It is not. So this gets an aqueous. All nitrates are soluble, so this gets an aqueous. So what you do is you put a big no reaction here. Um, nothing, nothing reacts, so you just write no reaction if nothing reacts. Um, so that's how you do this. Uh, that's how you do the precipitation reactions. Uh, those are the steps, and that's the process. So uh, this just takes a lot of practice and memorization of the solubility rules. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to look at acid-base reactions.